Hello Vinyl community, it's Bill here again and I'm going to do another, well, number two in Random Records and Music Ephemera. So uh, you'll maybe find out that the, the Random Records aren't so random, so it's not like a whack-a-mole. But uh, I also wanted to show some records that I don't see very often on the Vinyl community. And I thought I'd start off, before we go on and have a look at a few concert tickets and a couple of magazines. So I thought I'd show this record, which I don't think I've seen on the vinyl community before. It's uh, The Golden Hour of Gina Washington and the Ram Jam Band. And you'll know that Dexie's Midnight Runners had a, a smash hit. Uh, I think it was a number one with a song called Gino and the song was about Gino Washington and this man is a fantastic showman. I don't know if you can see the track listing from the back. This was recorded in 1967 and yeah. And I think it's side one is the 1967. And then I think side two is, uh, is from a later year. But uh, on this, we've got Day Tripper. We've got In the Midnight Hour, Ride Your Pony, I'm a Road Runner, Hold On, I'm Coming. And then side two, we've got Who's Fooling Who, and Respect. And in the, the track Respect, there's a great uh, description of, I think, uh, Gino Washington's possibly imaginary girlfriend. I'm, I'm sure he would be, uh, you know, quite a ladies' man, but this imaginary girlfriend had knees like bird's eye peas. And I think she had hips like battleships, so must have been a very unusual shape, but uh, re really good. High octane, high frenetic <laughs> uh, showmanship. And I think it's uh, sort of music on steroids. And I think they've taken the usual uh, songs and doubled the tempo. There's Michael and K. Sarra Sarra. And yeah, this is just a fantastic album and shows live music recorded on disc. And I, I would say this is probably one of my top 20 favorite live albums. So Gina Washington and the Ram Jam Band and uh, sort of funky soul from 67. I also wanted to show you uh, some more concert tickets. So this is a ticket from the Bridge, Bridges to Babylon tour by the Stones. You can see there's a yellow sticker on the ticket. Uh, I think it says rescheduled to Monday the 24th of August 1998. So I'm not sure if that... I think I've been waiting for a Stones concert for over a year when Mr. Jagger thought that the uh, tax bill, if he carried on touring, was going to be so high that he decided to stop touring so that his income in that uh, tax year would have been lower. So we had to wait uh, a while for it. But this one maybe was rescheduled for something else because I think the original date is maybe a month ending in E, maybe June <laughs> 98, but uh, yeah, the concert was uh, in August at <coughs> the home of Scottish Rugby, and I think that was one of these shows where they had a smaller stage in the middle, and there was the bridge from Babylon, and it was extended sort of maybe 
halfway through the concert and uh, people near that mini stage got a really good view of uh, Mick and I, I think maybe Keith joined him on that smaller stage and obviously they didn't move the drums so Charlie Watts, God rest his soul, was uh, still on the main stage. Also got a ticket from 89, no, 09, 2009. And this was when Neil Young played the Aberdeen Exhibition and Conference Centre. Really fantastic uh, concert, really enjoyable evening with uh, yeah, all the great hits being played. And then speaking about hits being played and uh, knowing the, the track listing, etc. This one is from D uh, Bob Dylan and Mark Knopfler at the Brayhead Arena near Glasgow. And this was in 2011. Dylan's vocals were shot to hell <laughs> in that concert. The, the musicianship of his band and Dylan himself was uh, first rate, but we had to, I think they did new arrangements. So we had to check the set list the following day. And we said, oh, that was all along the watch there. And I, I did hope that Mark Knopfler would be invited on stage to do the guitar solo and all along the watchtower, but no, he was kept to his own separate set, but uh, he put on an equally good performance there. And then this one is of The Who. I think this is The Who put the boot in, and this is from June. 1976, great concert. The sensational Alex Harvey band were on the on the bill. They were backed uh, before the Who. There were green lasers uh, going across from one stand to the other. Uh, fantastic uh, show. The drumming was done courtesy of Mr. Keith Moon. And yeah, the whole show was uh, really good. Uh, as I say, this band, Sensational Alex Harvey Band, playing his home crowd. And yeah, they got uh, guys up from the audience, or guys and girls maybe, uh, up from the audience and given a can of spray paint. And they had to paint Vambo rules onto a, a sort of backdrop of uh, bricks etc so it wasn't real bricks uh, it was just uh, a stage set but they got to write Vambo rules on it but uh, yeah they had uh, Tomahawk Kid a tribute to Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island etc and of course we had Delilah so that's the sensational Alex Harvey band Again, I don't think I've seen anybody show this on the VC. Maybe I haven't been looking hard enough. So there's a couple of magazines over my shoulder. We'll come to uh, one of them. Well, we'll come to both of them, but uh, one of them after I ask you if you can see the connection between these uh, next albums and one cassette. So the cassette I have to show is Shadi, and this is her best of, and you've got Your Love is King, Smooth Operator, and Paradise, Kiss of Life, Cherish the Day, Perils. Love is Stronger Than Pride. Really, really nice uh, album this. Uh, Shadi's uh, vocals are way up there, so really great female vocalist. So that's Shadi. And then this is from the file series. 
Uh, yeah, on the sleeve that's a bit tatty, <laughs> you won't be able to make out that it's uh, status quo. So this is on Pi Records, the sleeve for the filing. <laughs> Uh, has lost its uh, gum, I think. So, file series has a filing cabinet on it. But this is a collection of early status quo double album. So we've got, uh, as you expect, pictures of matchstick men. We've got uh, Technicolor Dreams and April, Spring, Summer and Wednesdays. So again, quite a few songs from their early catalogue that I'm not very familiar with. So that's side A and B. Second record uh, has a lot more things that we recognise. It's got Down the Dust Pipe. It's got uh, Garangela, In My Chair, Mean Girl. So Mean Girl and Down the Dust Pipe, I think, were, were early singles. So. so quite a nice write-up uh, by Peter Jones, good sleeve notes. And there's a list of the singles and weeks in the chart, etc. So. And there's a thanks to the melody maker on this. I don't know if that's where they got some of the information about uh, the chart list things, etc. So that's Shadi and Status Quo. So next one is Spandau Bali and the singles collection. Now you're maybe thinking that all these artists start with S. And that's true, <laughs> but uh, that's not the connection I'm looking for. This is a great uh, collection of uh, sort of, I was going to call, call it glam rock, but it's uh, the successor to glam rock. It's the new romantics. And yeah, this has got gold, true, to cut a long story short, chant number one, I don't need this pressure on, etc really good uh, collection of the best of Spandau Ballet. So are you, are you guessing the connections yet? Next one is The Who. So this is Who's Missing. And for my connection, Keith Moon would be missing. But uh, this uh, has got this is a compilation, I think, from the mid 80s. The sleeve notes are by Pete Townsend and dated August 85. This is a promo copy. Got it in New Zealand at uh, the, yeah, what's it called? Groovy Records. Real Groovy is the name of the, the record store in Auckland. So I picked this up. Uh, together with uh, 12 by 5 by the Rolling Stones and I had to carry this carefully all the way back to the UK as hand luggage <laughs> so it was going to be a lot cheaper than uh, asking the record shop to to send it on so ship it abroad so this, this is uh, quite interesting. This is uh, some songs that maybe weren't on other uh, records, but we've got Shout and Shimmy. We've got Barbara Ann. I think Keith Moon used to fancy himself as a, a beach boy, but his singing wasn't quite up to that. And uh, we've got Heaven and Hell, a, a John Entwistle composition from 90, 1970. And I don't even know myself, which I think was a a B side of a of a USA single, but uh, all the selections uh, 
do not feature on a US pressing of any other Who albums. Now it's interesting, this looks like a P Peter Blake cover, but it says sleeve design and front cover painting by Richard Evans with acknowledgements to Peter Blake. So I think, yeah, the style is very Peter Blake and pop art, but uh, I think that Richard Evans has really stolen the concept, uh, but had been kind enough to give a nod to Peter Blake, who did that other famous cover for Sergeant Peppers. Uh, but yeah, he's done other album covers, and I think he's got a painting in on the Face Dances album by this magnificent band. Have you guessed the connection yet? Queen, The Works. And this is a, a great album. Two standout tracks here. Radio Gaga and I Want to Break Free. But uh, yeah, and It's a Hard Life as well. So Freddie and the guys. The work. One more record to show. And again, if I omit Keith Moon from the connections, I'd also have to take Mr. Ridgely out of the, the connection for what's the connection between all those previous artists I've shown, excluding Chino Washington and uh, the sensational Alex Harvey band. But this man, George Michael, uh, is part of the connection. But this is uh, Wham's Make It Big. So it's, uh, again, a, a best of. And we've got Wake Me Up Before You Go Go. Heartbeat. And on the B side, we've got Freedom. And Careless Whispers also on here as well. So. I could have shown more records, uh, but uh, let's have a look at the first of those magazines. So here we have the Observer magazine from 18th August 1985 and David Bailey's Live Aid portfolio. So the connection was that uh, all those uh, acts I played Live Aid, but uh, in here we've got uh, Bailey's Backstage Pass, and we've got uh, lots of photographs. And we've got Phil Collins asking himself, why did I play both Wembley and Philadelphia? because I'm mad, there's Sting, and we have an interesting group photo of Queen. I don't know if that was before or after the, their set. We've got status quo. We have Paul Young and Alison Moye, there's Ultravox, and we have a very bearded Elvis Costello, and I'm not sure if that's his set list on the back of his hand. And then Pete Townsend saying, the concert was the only reason I can think of for the Who getting back together again. I think he maybe thought that through a bit more and has been playing a few more gigs since then. What else do we have? We have Elton John and George Michael, and of course the thin white Duke, David Bowie. And I think there was a quote from Bowie saying, Let's do it every year. It was fantastic. Let's do it again next year. 
and then we have some others. And Style Council, Adamant, Dire Straits, Shadi, Brian Ferry, Spandau Bally, U2, and Paul and Linda McCartney. And there's a, a very young Lenny Henry as well. And yeah, some interesting adverts of the day. So there we have it. And I'll just get that other magazine. Now, I'm not sure if you've come across this magazine, Greatest Hits. I think, I don't know if it was a precursor to Smash Hits, uh, but it was issue one, February, March, 1981. And you can see the thing that attracted me to it. Win a jukebox full of oldies. We'll come to the competition that was inside the magazine later, but yeah. Some interesting uh, cover stories or uh, glimpses of what's inside the magazine. This uh, was quite an interesting magazine. Shows the Beatles never go out of uh, fashion. Everybody's, uh, you know, telling their own Beatles stories. So even in early 1981, a lot of interest in the Beatles and the Hamburg connection. I'm reading the book Tune In by Mark Lewison. Uh, there is mention of the van that took them to Hamburg, but I didn't realise it would be loaded onto like a cargo boat. Of course, I, I guess they didn't have the roll on, roll off ferries at that time. And the magazine also has an article on Elvis on screen. And that's a list of all the films that Elvis appeared in. There's a print of Harem Scarum. I don't know if it says, uh, no, it says here Elvis on RCA records. But another, uh, you know, increasing list of, you know, Viva Las Vegas roused about. But uh, also, Spin Out and Clam Bake, Stay Away Joe. So I think this was the Colonel getting the most out of the, the film contracts. And yeah, it's a shame that uh, Elvis didn't spend more time on the, on the music rather than the, the films. But yeah, yes. There we are, PG Pro B as well. So let me see if I can find the, the page with the competition. There's a good advert for Charlie Records here. So win a jukebox. But the idea was that they had the names of, was that 20 different songs and the artists mixed up with the, the song titles. So here we have Deep Purple, I Hear You Knocking and Nazareth doing Pub With No Beer. So what you had to do was correctly pair up the artist with the, the song. And you were promised, you know, that the winner of the jukebox would be announced in their issue number two on the 15th of March. And having sent away 
my entry coupon. You can see there's a gap there. I was uh, looking forward to seeing addition to, but I never saw it. So I don't know if uh, there just hadn't been enough people uh, buying this inaugural issue and therefore it went out of print before it even got started, I think. And there's the usual reviews and Deep Purple in concert. Yeah. Paul Anka's 21 golden hits. So, yeah, don't know why I've kept it. Uh, <coughs> maybe it's uh, to prove that I did send away the, the entry in, in case somebody's got my jukebox there with all the, the golden hits that were promised with it. So. It's interesting to see sometimes uh, magazines and uh, what they start out with. We had sounds of the 60s. And this was going to be the beginning of an A to Z of British beat groups. So we got the, the action, Ambrose Slade. And there's Slade, so Ambrose Slade, Noddy Holder, Jim Lee, Dave Hill, and Don Powell. So I think that group must have uh, dropped the Ambrose and just become Slade. Then there's Amen, Amen Corner, the Animals, the Apple Jacks, the Artwoods, who had Keith Hartley on drums. Atomic Rooster and Argent with, of course, Rod Argent. And this is him setting up his new band after he left the Zombies. So I suppose I've got the A to Z in the one. Don't know if you wanted to see that. <laughs> You've seen it now. The one and only copy of Greatest Hits magazine or the one and only issue of Greatest Hits magazine. If you know differently, if you got issue two, I'd love to see it. And uh, you can drop a comment uh, below. I shall be back for another episode of Random Records and Music Ephemera. And uh, bye just now. <laughs>